Elon Musk said that one day Tesla will be valued more than Apple and Saudi Aramco combined. That's pretty darn crazy. The curious pigeon that I am, I got curious and I wanted to see how that will look like in the future. And what I found was pretty shocking. And I'm going to show you guys the data or the prediction that I made up until 2030 with Tesla versus Apple and Saudi Aramco. We're going to look at the sales, the profits and the stock prices, but what it could be by 2030. So if you guys are ready, man, then smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, man. <laughs> Let's go. So obviously guys before I get into this video I do have to say that I'm not a financial advisor I'm just a guy on the internet who loves Tesla and is going all into Tesla and just loves Tesla and doing stock predictions Not just only on Tesla although it's been mainly Tesla But other companies too which today we're going to cover Apple and Aronco as well and see who is going to be valued the most at the end of the year And yeah, the data after when I made this data man, it was quite shocking by the end of 2030. So again do your own research, do your own DD because obviously more research is needed and take this video with a grain of salt. All right, now let's get down to the video. Starting off with Tesla and here is a Tesla stock price prediction chart. I got the automobiles here, the credits, the FSD, the energy and some expenses like the FX currency expense which does take a big hit on their earnings. So I add it here as well. Now we'll go over this chart together as we go forward to figure out some numbers. So let's start off with 2023. In 2023, I'm expecting they're gonna do about one point eight five million vehicle deliveries how did i get that number check it out over here but with that i mean look at all the numbers come in it's absolutely i mean this is amazing i love it but what i'm saying here is that 2024 and 2025 is a 40 percent growth year over year 2026 2027 is a 35 percent growth year over year and 2028 all the way to 2030 is a 30 percent growth year over year and as you guys can see we're not even reaching 15 million vehicles deliveries by 2030 and i do believe that i don't think we're going to reach 20 million vehicles by 2030 2032 yes 2031 yes but 2030 i think there's gonna be delays with you know gigafactory making and models i mean look at the cyber truck it was supposed to be coming in 2021 now we're in 2023 so expect more of these delays so you don't have your expectations too high my expectation is just below 15 million vehicle deliveries by 2030, which is absolutely ridiculous, right? That's a record. Even in 2029, if they do 11 million vehicles, no one has ever sold more than 10 and a half million vehicles, and that's Toyota. So if, if they can reach 11 million vehicles by 2029 deliveries, then sheesh, that's what it is. But don't hate on me, guys. I'm saying 20 million by 2032. So going to average a vehicle sold, the average selling price. In 2023, I'm saying 50,000. In 2024, I'm saying 51,000 because of the Cybertruck. In 2025, 50,000. And then 2026, we may see the compact car come our bit, maybe coming, going into a little bit, little bit of a mass production, which is 48,000. Same story in 2027, comes down to 47,000. 2028, it's a lot more. 2029, 2030, goes down to 38,000 per vehicle being sold. And then we've got a total vehicle revenue by 2030, half a trillion dollars. That's absolutely crazy. Like over $500 billion, that's insane in just vehicle sales alone. That's crazy. And I'm gonna give it a 20% operating margin here because yeah, Tesla is efficient and minimum you should be thinking 20%. Anything below that, you gotta think about how Tesla's producing these compact cars. They're doing it in a way that they will have a good amount of profits, at least 30%. If you bring all the costs down, everything, it will come down to a 20% net. So right now we're at 15.4 and maybe this year we're gonna be at 14% as you guys see here. It could be lower if they continue with the price cuts, but I'm saying by 2030 because we're gonna have economy of scale, materials are gonna be cost less and you know, I'm, I'm betting on economy of scale, man. I mean, 14 and a half a million vehicles. That means production is maybe, maybe at like 16 to 17 million vehicles annually at that rate of deliveries. So 20%, I think, could be actually a conservative number. But with that, we get about over $110 billion in total vehicle profits, which is just absolutely insane. Then we get the credits here. Most people are saying that credits are going to go away as we go forward into the years. But why would they? It's just free money for Tesla. It's free profits, pretty much 100% all profits. So why would they get rid of it? I don't see them getting rid of it. In fact, I see them maintaining it to offset the FX currency expenses and other expenses that may come up. So I don't think that's gonna go away anytime soon. Moving on to full self-driving, I am saying that the one-time fee by 2030 is gonna be worth almost $30,000, like $29,000. Now, most of you guys think I'm crazy here, but if you go back to 2020, full self-driving was at $8,000, and by 2022, end of 2022, they increased it to 15,000. The reason why 
I have 12 and a half here is to get the average of it in 2022. But within two years, they doubled it. They almost doubled it. I'm saying in the next seven years, they're going to double it. And that I think is being conservative. Now going on the subscription base does make more sense. We just don't have the data at the moment. I did make some rough calculations. You guys can check it out in this video here, but one time fee at a 15% rate conversion rate vehicles with FSD is the next row. And then we got the total FSD sales as you guys can see here, and the total FSD profit margin. Now in 2022, it was about 44%. 2023 is gonna be 46% and it increases 2% every single year up until 2030, making it 60% just pure profit. I mean, that's what this FSD is all about. Just pure profit. It's a software. When you get the car, you just gotta download the software on your car and that's it, it's full stop driving, you have it. And who knows, by 2030, you could be driving your car, sorry, the car will be driving you places and it'll be regulated by 2030. Again, I'm not too sure. The way how this FSD is improving and progressing, it's a sheesh moment, man, I'm telling you. And yes, I am betting a lot or predicting and believing that they're actually going to solve this FSD issue, this FSD software. And I really do believe that. So with that, we get a FSD profit margin of $38 billion by 2030, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, it could be more if it gets regulated and all, but keeping it conservative, 15%. Then we got energy, Tesla Energy. In 2022, they did almost $4 billion in total revenue and profits. They did about almost $300 billion. The last quarter of 2022, they did 12% margin, which is absolutely insane. What I'm saying in 2023 is 7,500 or $7.5 billion and about a 12% rate on that the whole entire year of 2023 and we get $900 billion. And then in 2024, I'm saying 11 and a half billion with a 13% margin, which almost is around $1.5 million, and then 50% revenue every single year after that up until 2030, and the profit margin increases every single year. So 2025 is 14%, then 15, then 16, then 17, 18, 19%. It's not reaching the 20%. That's how you know I'm staying conservative on this as well, because they did say that the energy part, they wanted to match this, their vehicles, which would be 20%. Now, it could be more, could be a whole lot more, but Again, I'm gonna keep their word on the same margin as the vehicles. Total revenue, as you guys can see here, from 2023, I'm saying over $100 billion they're gonna do in 2023. I mean, that'd be insane. That'll be a day to see that Tesla does over $100 billion in a single year. We did $81 billion in 2022, so it's just inevitable we're gonna do over $100 billion in 2023. It's just gonna happen. I'm gonna finish off this decade over $750 billion in revenue. And again, this is only FSD, energy, and vehicles. There's no robo-taxi, there's no Tesla bot, and the other things that are coming. It's just on these three things. And they are conservative as well. With the profits that you guys can see here, I'm saying that by 2023, end of this year, it's going to be almost over, I mean, over $17 billion in net income. And then by end of 2030, it's going to be over $175 billion in profits. But then we got the FX currency expense that we have to deduct from here as well. And for that, I'm saying 2023, they're going to be paying about almost $1.5 billion in just FX currency, which that'll bring down the net income from 17, over 17 billion to just below $16 billion. So it doesn't make a big impact and then next year for 24 i'm saying 1.6 and then 1.8 and then just 200 million dollars increase year over year it could be more than this i'm not gonna lie it could be more but i am optimistic that the interest rates will come back down and that'll weaken the us dollar and that'll help with the fx currency expense but this is a big expense for tesla as it slashes right from the net income so for me that's important now for the shares outstanding from 2023 all the way to 2030 every single year there's gonna be a two percent dilutions there's no buybacks there's no dividends nothing nothing it's just continuous Continue diluting, Elon's gonna dilute. I don't know, they're gonna keep doing this employment compensation, this benefit thing they do in the company when it comes down to, you know, getting shares and all that kind of stuff. So 2% dilution every single year. And as you guys can see, the EPS in 2022 was $4.07. We could end up at $4.86. And by 2030, almost $47 EPS earnings per share, which is absolutely and flipping it. Same. Now, let's go ahead and find the stock price, see what it would be year over year. If you guys are ready, man, then smash that like button, man. Like, come on. All right, let's go. So in 2022, and 2020 was a very bad year for Tesla. I mean, the stock dropped about 70 to 80%. And the average for Tesla stock was around 204 bucks per share with a 50 PE. It did go down, actually it went down to 100 and two bucks per share, but the full fiscal year for Tesla wasn't ended. So even with 1.3, we haven't reached 102 bucks per share. Maybe yet, I don't know, but it did reach 102 bucks per share and the stock was trading around 30 to 35 PE at some point. So that's just crazy. But a 50 PE was 
literally where the Q4 came out, that's where the stock went up to. And we're still around that mark around 180, 170. We're ping ponging too much. Let's just say at that time when Q4 came out and you bought at 204 bucks per share, you put $10,000 worth of Tesla stock. You invested about 49 shares, which would give you about $10,000 investment, initial investment, average cost price of 204 bucks per share. Let's see if you're going to make your money or less your money. We're going to use this for every single scenario as well through the Apple and Arkuma. Arkuma, no. Aronco, the heck. I am expecting by end of this year, because remember, these numbers are coming by the end of this year, not now, like end of 2023, maybe the first quarter of 2024. So literally, it's at the end of it. Very optimistic that we're going to enter a bull market by end of this year. I do expect inflation coming down. I do expect Fed pausing. I'm very optimistic, but end of 2023 at 60 PE does make sense. I'm saying 292 bucks per share and a market cap almost reaching a trillion dollars. That would mean your $10,000 initial investment is now over 14,000. I mean, you've, you, you've made 40% of your money in just within a year. That's just insane. Again, this may not happen. It may still stay between the 50 PE range. You probably will make 20%, which is still a lot. I mean, 19% a 20% is still a good return, but 60 PE at 292 bucks per share. I think, I think this could happen in 2024. I think we're going to be at a very, very bullish state. I'm giving a 65 PE, giving a stock price of 478 bucks per share. Some are saying a PE of 55 around 400. Still a good stock price, but 65 PE at the optimistic side of 478 bucks per share and a market cap over $1.5 trillion, which would be a record for Tesla. And look at that. Your 14 K just slapped on another nine K on top of that of twenty three and a half thousand dollars that's absolutely flipping insane in 2025 i gave it a pe of 60 and we get a stock price of 650 bucks per share and a market cap almost reaching 2.2 trillion dollars i mean that's just insane <laughs> that's just flipping insane your 23k at that time in 2024 has now turned to 31 almost 32 thousand dollars your 10,000 initial investment is now turned to oh, oh, almost 32 thousand bucks per share which is absolutely insane not as insane as 2026 and i gave it a pe of 55 and we get a stock price of 828 bucks per share and a market cap over two 2.8 trillion dollars now your investment has more than 4x from initially that's just insane Sheesh. so what i'm saying here in 2026 they're gonna do their stock split i'm guessing four for one here in 2026 let's see if this becomes true i mean if we do go into a massive bull state then we could probably see a stock split coming in 2024 and here's a video to prove that but anyways my prediction is 2026 we're going to see the first stock split then. In 2027, I'm going to give it a PE of 50 and we get a stock price of 1061 with a market cap $3.7 trillion, which is absolutely insane. And now your investment from 10,000 is now 52,000, more than 5X saying. That's just insane. That, that, I mean, that took five years. So every year you're doubling your money. That, that's that's crazy. In 2028, a PE of 45 and we get a stock price of 1256 at a market cap almost reaching $4.5 trillion. And now your initial investment from 10,000 is now $61,500. That's insane, bro. Sheesh. 2028, I gave it a PE of 40 and we get a stock price of $14.91 and a market cap of $5.4 trillion. And that will give your investment $73,000. So it's more than 7x thing in seven years. That's, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And last but not least in 2030, with a PE of 35, you get a stock price of 1632 and a market cap over $6 trillion. And now your initial investment that you invested from 10K is now almost 80K. So literally an 800% growth from now to 2030. You see guys, that's why I'm going all into Tesla stock. I mean, the value, I mean, I mean, this is insane. Now again, this may not happen. This could be half, but if it is half, that's 400% growth. That's insane. Now let's see how Apple is gonna do from now to 2030. You guys are ready, man? Then smash that like button, man. Come on. Lovely Apple, man. You know, Apple is a, such a great company and such a safe company and pretty much a guaranteed return on your investment, even though it's not going to be as much as Tesla. It's still going to give you phenomenal returns that I'm going to show you guys right now. So in 2022, they did about over $274 billion in revenue, which is insane. That's crazy. Their profits was over $57 billion. Stock price around 120 bucks per share and market cap over $2 trillion in 2020. In 2021, they did about $365 billion in total revenue and net income almost reaching near the 100 billions. That's insane. And that was a stock price of 174 bucks per share and a market cap. I mean, it did reach 3 trillion for some time, then it went back down and now we're at 
around the two trillion mark, if I'm not mistaken. In 2022, they did about 394 billion, or actually more than that, and net income almost reaching just 200 million off the 100 billion mark, which is absolutely insane. But you know, the stock market didn't care. It was in the middle of a crash, and they went from three trillion valuation to two trillion valuation. So they lost a trillion of the value, which is absolutely crazy. But what's even more crazier is that the stock could go even lower, and I'm gonna tell you why. In 2023, based on simply Wall Street, well, pretty much 2023, 2024, and 2025, I took their numbers and I put it here. They're saying that in 2023, their revenue is gonna decrease from 2022 to 388 billion, almost 389 billion. And then their net income is gonna get crushed down 6 billion to 94 billion dollars. So what's going on here? And that's because in interest rates are high and Apple has a hundred billion dollars in debt so we can see where that's being eaten out of and then we see 2024 going back up and 2025 going back up but then 2026 and onwards we don't have data for it and that's because it's you know based on you and I that we have to figure out so what I did was to keep it simple is that I took 2019 sales and profits all the way to 2020 and I just saw what the growth was for the sales and profits and this is what we get overall for the past four years they've been growing at a at a sales rate, total revenue rate of 16% and a profit rate of 25%. Now again, 2020 to 2021 was a very abnormal year because you know we had free money in the system, people were buying zero interest rates. So really these growths in 2020, 2021, is inflated. I don't think we're going to see Apple growing at this rate anytime soon unless we have rates low again and we have quantitative easing going on once again. And looking at simply Wall Street, they're saying around 6 to 7% growth year over year for their earnings. Yeah, you guys see where I'm going with this. But I don't think they're going to grow 6 to 7% year over year. I think it's going to be more than that. I think I think Apple is they're very stealthy. You know, Tesla's wide in the open. They're saying that, yeah, we have the next gen coming here. We got the FSD, we got the Bob, we got the batteries, we got the energy, we got all these things going on for us. Apple doesn't come out and say all these things. They just one day say, hey, we have this uh, product reveal day and uh, we're gonna reveal our products. And that's where everyone goes like, oh wow. I mean, just look back to the iPhone, the iPad release days, how they did it, how Steve Jobs did it, right? So I think Apple is going more toward these things. Now, yes, Steve Jobs is not around anymore. We have Tim Cook, who's more into scaling and, you know, making more money for investors compared to Steve Jobs, who just wants to make, you know, new and innovative items and products for us for to live better, kind of like what Elon Musk is right now. But nonetheless, even though Apple's innovation has been taken a back seat, don't bet, on, don't bet against that. I do think that they have something coming up and uh, once it's revealed and we can see the stock price jump to next levels. We'll see what happens that day and obviously valuations will change. It's just based off today and how they're gonna go if they didn't innovate. So with that, I'm saying a 12% growth year over year for their revenue. And by 2030, we get almost, I mean, over $680 billion, which is insane. And then for their earnings, I gave it an 8% year over year growth and we get around almost $159 billion in net income. Now, shares of standing, here's why I say Apple stock is a safe and guaranteed stock to invest in. I mean, if you buy and hold long term, you can't really go wrong by investing into Apple. If we go ahead and take a look at Apple's shared standing history, they've been buying back and they've been buying back for a long time and they don't do it in small changes. They buy back around $80 billion every single quarter. That is a sheesh moment right there and that's just insane. That's about 4% on an annual basis they buy back. Any investor who's invested into Apple, they're extremely happy. Not only that, they also pay dividends, but we'll get to that in a second. So every single year, I'm saying that from 2023 all the way to 2030, there's going to be a 4% buyback for Apple. And we get from, right now it's around like 15.8, 15.6 billion. I'm saying by 2030, it's going to be 11.5 billion. So that's a whole lot of buyback man but it's apple they're making money now finding the pe for the stock price if you guys are ready man smash that like button let's go so in 2022 stock price was 126 bucks per share and you are very smart you were like wow that's pretty low for apple i'm gonna go ahead and invest ten thousand dollars into it and that's about 79 shares of apple stock at a price of 126 bucks per share and to add on top of this right now apple is paying around 0.61% of dividends. So we're gonna add this as well because that comes under your total return here too. So 2022, 10,000 bucks that whole year. Now you made $61 that year of 2022. Let's just say that 126 happened in the beginning of 2022, even though this was near the end of it. To keep it simple, beginning of 2022, you have a full fiscal year of Apple, full year, you made 61 bucks just off dividends. 
nice good stuff go get yourself some starbucks coffee or something now 2023 i'm gonna give it a pe of 25 because again i do think we're gonna go into that bull market and i do think that the pe is gonna get uncompressed people investors are gonna understand that hey man you got 100 billion dollars in debt inter interest rates are high you're doing these numbers it's phenomenal so I don't think investors are going to lose confidence. I think, in fact, they're going to see this more of a bullish sign. Like, come on, you're almost doing the same amount of numbers since 2022 in a very weird economy. And you pulled out of Russia as well. So that's a huge moment right there. So with that, a 25 PE will give us a stock price of 155 bucks per share and a market cap over $2.3 trillion. Your 10K has now turned to over 12K, so 22% return. And now you, that year you made 75 bucks just off dividends. Nice, good stuff. In 2024, I gave it a PE of 24. We get a stock price of 167 bucks per share and a market cap almost two and a half trillion dollars. Your 10K has now turned to over 13K. So you've made 30% if you kept holding and you also made $80 that year. So nice, good stuff. 2025, a PE of 23. And we get a stock price of 177 bucks per share and a market cap, you know, just a bit over than last year's two and a half trillion dollars and your 10k has now turned to 14k which is a 40 percent growth and that year you made 85 dollars and 48 cents nice good stuff in 2026 22 pe with a stock price of 191 bucks per share 2.6 trillion dollars you know it's going up gradually a little bit but now you've made 15k compared to 10k that compound interest is working well even for a company like apple sheesh and you've also made 92 bucks on dividends. Good stuff. In 2027, 21 PE, 205 bucks per share, a market cap almost 2.5 and a half trillion dollars, 16K, another K on top of that, 60% growth from 2022 till now, insane, almost 100 bucks in dividends in that whole year. Nice stuff. In 2028, I gave it a PE of 20 with a stock price of 220 bucks per share and a market cap over $2.7 trillion. Again, another slap on thousand to that. We get 17,000 bucks. You made 7K in literally, you're making a K a year just off Apple alone, just off their capital gains. And then you got 106 bucks for dividends. That's good stuff, man. Apple is solid. 2029 and 2030, I kept it at 20 PE. And by 2030, as you can see, 270 78 bucks per share and a market cap almost reaching 3.2 trillion and now your investment more than doubled man i mean almost 22,000 bucks from 10,000 that's absolutely insane and that year you also made 133 134 bucks in terms of dividends overall in dividends for that whole entire eight years you bought the stock you made about 851 bucks in dividends if you add that to the total capital as well that's about almost 23,000 dollars or over 128 percent Sheesh, that's crazy. For Apple to give you 128% in about seven years, that is insane. And that is a trooper. Now, again, if there's innovation here and there's new products coming out, we can probably see this number instead of 128%, it's going to be around the 200%, maybe 300%, depending what they innovate and they bring to the market. But this is just based off now and today and no innovation. So that's still amazing. That's that's crazy good. But is it going to be good as Aramco, which is really, the number surprised me at what they do, but also the stock price is very volatile. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's get down to it. Saudi Aramco, let's see how you're going to be by 2030. If you guys are ready, man, smash that like button. Let's go. So you guys may not know it, but Saudi Aramco was the world's most valued company last year in 2022. And we can thank the Russian invasion for that when the oil prices went to 120 bucks per barrel. Saudi made a whole bunch of money. And we can see here in 2022, they made $727 billion. That is crazy. That is insane. But look at the profits, $160 billion. That's insane. And I think this is the only company in the world that's making this amount of profits per year. That's just flipping. It's it's bonkers. It's crazy. And what's even crazier is that in 2022, where oil went down to below zero dollars, they still made $50 billion. How the heck did they still make money in the year when barrels, when the price of oil was negative? Doing some research, I was kind of shocked to see the numbers. But again, this is this was a source saying that it cost them five to six dollars per barrel in Saudi Aramco. Now, do I believe that? I'm not, I, I don't think so. I mean, how, I mean, five to six dollars per barrel? 
That's insane. Exxon, Shell, all these other companies, even Gazprom from Russia, their cost is 40 bucks per barrel. Saudi Aramco is five to six bucks. Again, I don't know. They've, Saudi Aramco has never come out and said how much it costs per barrel, even though they're a public traded company. I mean, kind of, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but that's just insane. In, in the worst year ever, they've made $50 billion. That is insane. That is crazy. And I don't know what to say. I mean, that's just, that's insane. Now, 2022, they had a share that's standing of almost 200 billion. I'm not kidding. You can even search it up. It's, I mean, I've never seen a company being diluted this much. What's even more crazier, in 2022, it increased about 10% from 2021, which went down about 10 billion shares or something. That's crazy how much they diluted, but we'll get to the dilution in a bit. With all that, man, in 2022, Aramco stock was $7.40 if you convert it to US dollars, and market cap was $1.5 trillion. And then in 2021, we have, as you guys can see, 400 billion in total revenue and 105 billion in net income over that. 16p, it was about $8.50 if you convert it to dollars and a market cap over almost reaching $1.7 trillion. In 2022, again, look at that. They, this is a record. They've, this is like, no one has done this. That's just insane. So the number are just so bonkers for me to see. I mean, we calculated Tesla's 2030 earnings and revenue, and they'll reach this number by 2030. Aramco is doing it today. I mean, that's just, that's insane. That's absolutely crazy. Profits and revenue. But let's figure out what the revenue net income will be in 2023 and onwards. Now, unfortunately, I checked simply Wall Street, and they had some weird number. I mean, it didn't make any sense at all. So I took matters in my own hands because no one else on the internet does have any forecast for Aramco. It's weird. But I guess when you think about it, oil prices go up and down like ping pong balls. So I guess it's really hard to predict such event. Nonetheless, we got Curious Pedgy here and I got to work. And looking at the oil prices today compared to last year, I mean, it's down about 40% from 120 to around like 70, 80 Bruh. bucks per barrel. I mean, it doesn't affect, you know, Aramco. I mean, per barrel is five to six bucks right so anyways in 2023 we're not going to expect 700 billion in sales it's just not going to happen in fact i'm saying they're going to go down 40 percent as well because the prices are low 40 percent and for revenue we get over 436 billion dollars and for net income i'm going to give it the same rate as 2021 around 25 percent and that's about almost 110 billion dollars which is absolutely not bad but that's 2023 and i'm pretty confident about this number because oil prices are down if it goes back up again then you know it's, it's it's really hard to predict, but I do think around this amount would be happening more than 2021 for sure. Now, to figure out 2024, 2025 and onwards, what I did was that I went back in history, man, from 2019 to 2020, sales and profits got their average growth year over year. For the past four years, they were growing at a 42% for revenue and 40% for profits. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing 40% year over year for Aramco because, again, oil ain't the future. Yes, we still need oil for another hundreds and hundreds of years, not just to, you know, fill up our car. That's going to be eliminated, obviously. But for other things, man, you know, making our laptops, our, you know, material stuff, anything that we use on a daily basis needs oil. It's not just planes and cars and boats, man. We use it for everything and as it should. it should. It shouldn't be used for something to put into a car and get smoked up in the air. You know what I mean? Oil is not going to go away anytime soon. And in fact, a lot more, a lot of economies do need it, especially the de developing ones. They need it more than ever. So oil is going to be around for quite some time. Now, are they going to be around enough that they're going to make 40% growth year over year? Eh, I don't think so. So what I did was because it fluctuates too much for oil prices and it's based on world events and black swans and, you know, one country doing one other thing, you know, it's based on so many things. I just said 15% growth year over year for the revenue. I think that's fair. Comment down below if that's fair or not. But 15% year over year, 2024, all the way to 2030. And look at that. With that rate, 15% growth from year over year, that's almost 1.2 trillion in revenue. That's insane. That means based on this prediction, Saudi Aramco is going to be the first company to make a trillion in revenue. Sheesh. That's insane. But let's see what the profits would be. The profits range on an annual basis between 20 to 25%, which is not bad actually. So I just kept it very conservative, right in the middle, 22.5% for the whole entire year. 2024 all the way to 2030 and look at that by end of 2030 over 260 billion the quarter of a trillion that's quarter of a trillion in net income profits which is absolutely in flip insane now the craziness doesn't stop here with aramco it, it actually gets you know more crazy 
And that's the shares outstanding. The reason why the stock price is around eight bucks if you convert it to US dollars is because of the shares outstanding. And yes, as we spoke about in 2022, about 220 billion is being shares outstanding. And looking at their history, they seem to be increasing it 10% every other year, making giving it an average around 5% dilution every single year. On the average in my opinion i do think that's because they're giving a 3.9 percent dividend which could help dilute the stock but not to this rate like five percent yearly on the average is insane i mean exxon mobile doesn't even do that in fact they're buying back so why is saudi aramco doing so much dilution maybe in the future they'll do buybacks but I, i'm not too sure the, i mean they're going crazy in shares outstanding it's insane so instead what i did was i said four percent year over year they're gonna continue diluting the shares outstanding and with that we get all over 300 billion in 2030 which is just absolutely insane the eps follows that as well and now it's time for the p if you guys are ready for the p you see what the stock price would be why well, haven't you smashed that like button come on man let's go so in 2022 end of 2022 they were valued about two trillion right with a stock price of eight dollars and 70 cents and let's say you decide to dump ten thousand dollars in there at the beginning of the year and let's say that these were the numbers at the beginning of the year and you with a full fiscal year and you made about 390 dollars in dividends because they pay about 3.9 percent in dividends alone so not bad you make three almost 400 bucks in a year and you did nothing so good stuff man now going to 2023 in 2023 i am expecting them to drop in sales and profits but again so it'll be highly profitable i'm gonna give it a pe of 16 that will give the stock price of seven dollars and 60 cents and a market cap over 1.7 trillion dollars the stock price went down you've lost about 1700 bucks off your initial investment but you've made about 342 bucks in dividends so not bad but if you keep holding on till 2024 they did hit over half a trillion mark in revenue and over 112 billion dollars in net income i'm gonna give it a pe of 15 here and that's a stock price of seven dollars and ten cents market cap of 1.7 trillion and well looks like you're losing more money now from 8700 to almost eight just below 8200 bucks but if you keep holding on to 2025 p of 15 we get a stock price of almost eight dollars per share market cap going back 2022 to levels actually more than that at 1.9 and a half trillion dollars which is insane now you've kind of made your money back a little bit now you're back in the nine thousands but you've made 353 bucks in dividends that year so not bad not bad moving on to 2026 we get a total revenue of 663 billion dollars and an income almost 150 billion i'm going to give it a p of 14 and that will give us a stock price of eight dollars and ten cents market cap over two trillion actually reaching almost 2.1 trillion which is not bad and your initial investment been slowly going back to break even but dividend 364 bucks which is not bad at all moving on to 2027 a pe of 13 now which is interesting here this year we are hitting all-time highs in terms of revenue and profits so that's very interesting not too sure if that will happen or not but i mean that's very interesting a 13 pe will give the stock price of eight dollars and thirty cents now again the reason why the stock is not moving as much is because the shares are standing but with that that's a market cap of over 2.2 trillion dollars your initial investment is now going back to 9600 and you've made 374 bucks in that year which is not bad 2028 again we're hitting record numbers in revenue and profits again at 12 pe eight dollars and fifty cents a market cap itching towards a 2.5 trillion mark and now you're almost literally you're almost there to your initial investment I and mean, that's insane you've 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 held about six years and you i mean you still haven't recovered your initial investment but you've made about 381 bucks in revenue so that's not too bad in 2029 we are hitting a trillion in revenue and a net income of 227 billion dollars again i'm gonna give it a p of 11 here and that will give us a stock price of eight dollars and sixty cents two and a half trillion in market cap your initial investment is almost there but it's not you're still losing you're still down on your initial investment but you made almost 390 bucks in dividends that year moving on to 2030 i'm gonna give it a p of 10 i mean 1.1 trillion over almost 1.2 trillion in revenue and quarter more over quarter of a trillion and net income that's insane with a 10 pe that's eight dollars and 70 cents market cap over 2.6 trillion wow and a decade and you still haven't made your money back your initial investment back that kind of sucks but anyways almost a four percent dividend is not bad man i mean you made almost 400 bucks that year of 2030 not bad overall if you bought from 2022 and held to 2030 you've made about 3300 dollars in dividends alone if you slap on to that initial investment that's about over 13,000. so you made about 51 percent from 2022 to 2030 which is eh, not the greatest return 
but I guess an okay return. Again, this is a volatile stock. Who knows, maybe oil prices again will peak in 2027 when maybe China invades Taiwan. I, I don't know, maybe it'll go to 150 bucks again. We can see it roar up. <laughs> I really don't know. But as Elon said before, that we pretty much probably peaked in oil prices so let's see not too sure if that's true or not again oil prices is very volatile it's very geopolitical it's very political and it's very manipulated so let's see what the year will be for our kuma and you know what that's why the low pe explains because nobody really wants to invest in a company that's very geopolitical that's very political you know what i mean so that's why the pe's are low and they know that oil is not really too much of a long-term thing because we have countries and governments pushing for cleaner energy you know renewable energy which i'm all for man i love that kind of stuff solar energy electric vehicles all that kind of stuff so really this type of market i mean we're gonna have it for centuries to come but it's a diminishing commodity decade after decade and that would explain why the pe is low and maybe because they keep diluting so much that's also the reason why there you have it around code 2030 initial investment you're not gonna get it back <laughs> or maybe you will i don't know again it's all a prediction and a prediction alone this is based on 15 percent growth year over year for revenue and obviously if shares of standing being diluted four percent maybe halfway through this decade they'll do buybacks and that'll change the whole thing around actually that'll bring the price probably double to what it is now so let's see what happens with aramco by end of 2030 now let's go ahead and recap and let's see if tesla <laughs> is worth more than aramco and apple combined guys are ready man Smash that like button, let's go. Alrighty, so 2030 recap, Tesla, Apple, Aramco, revenue, profit, stock price, market cap, and the ROI as you guys can see. So Tesla in 2030, revenue over 750 billion. Remember this number, 750 billion for 2030 was today's Aramco's revenue, like 725. 27 billion dollars so that's insane apple 781 billion in revenue and aramco 1.1 almost 1.2 trillion which is insane profits 172 billion for tesla which is more than apple's in 2030 about 159 billion and then we have aramco 261 billion like you know surpassing quarter of a trillion in profit it was insane stock price tesla at 1632 bucks per share apple 278 bucks per share and aramco eight dollars and seventy cents sense stock price here doesn't really matter you'll know what the company is really worth if you look at the market cap and we see tesla 6.4 trillion dollars in market cap apple over 3 trillion 3.1 trillion and aramco 2.61 trillion now let's see if tesla is going to surpass apple and aramco combined you all ready let's check this out so again, six trillion. Let's keep it simple. Let's add these together. Apple and Aramco, and we get five point seven eight trillion dollars. Whoa, that's insane. That's actually pretty shocking. I didn't think they're gonna do that. I mean, sheesh. Now, obviously, guys, this is only a prediction. A prediction alone. This may not happen. But if twenty thirty, if Apple does these sales and does these profits and trades at their PE of twenty. They get a stock price of 278 and Aramco trades at a 10 PE with $271 billion in net income with an extremely high shares outstanding. It's kind of funny to, to see that kind of level of shares outstanding. With a 2.61 trillion market cap, add them together, that's 5.78 trillion. And Tesla's at 6 trillion in market cap by 2030. That's insane. That's absolutely infinite insane. Sheesh. And the other interesting thing here is the row next to it, the ROI based on a 10K investment. With Tesla, from now till 2030, it's an 800% growth. Then it's 128% growth for Apple. Then it's a 51% growth for Aramco. Just the sheer amount of Tesla growth of 800% in eight years is mind-boggling. It's insane. It's unbelievable. But you gotta believe it, man. And that's the reason why, man, I'm going all in into Tesla stock. But I'm telling you, 800% growth from now to 2030 will give you a market cap more than Apple's and Aramco's combined together. If you guys aren't aware, today the world's most valuable company is Apple, then it's Microsoft, then it's Aramco. Tesla is like number nine or something. By end of this year, Tesla's probably gonna be number one if they do six trillion and they're gonna beat Apple and Aramco. That's insane, that's crazy, and it's hard for me to believe. I think Apple is gonna be more closer to four trillions. I think Aramco is surpassing three trillions. I don't know, let's see. Based on these numbers, man, based on these predictions, Kind of shocking to see that really Elon Musk saying that one day Tesla will be worth more than Apple and Aramco. And if these are the numbers that they're going to get, I mean, then he's smack on right, man. That's a sheesh moment right there. Sheesh. So there you have it, guys, man. Tesla surpassing Apple and Aramco is possible if they do these numbers, if they hit these numbers. 
Again, that is a very sheesh moment. Not too sure if this was actually this will actually happen. So take this video with a grain of salt, obviously. But man, laying out the numbers like this, sheesh, absolute sheesh. But the question is, Tesla stock is down again, below 200 bucks per share. Does that mean a time to buy? Well, check out this video and you can make your own conclusion based off that. We look at the bear case, base case, and bull case. If you bought at that, what the stock price could be next year and how much money you would have made or lost. So it's a very interesting video. Check it out. Support the channel, man, by becoming a channel member and getting the wall poster of Go All In and the t-shirt, man. And subscribe for more and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.